What's up, Portland? John Taylor, founder of PortlandRealEstateExperts.com. And I'm Christina Bullock, co-founder of PortlandRealEstateExperts.com. And we are your host for the show that brings you interesting people talking about what makes them unique, what makes Portland unique, and why Portland is such a great place to live. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the All Things Portland podcast. I'm your host, John Taylor, along with my lovely co-host, Christina Bullock. How are you doing today? Hi, I'm doing great. Thank you. Today, we're going to talk about what everybody's talking about, and we're going to dabble in some COVID, and we're going to talk about some civil unrest in our city of Portland. Uh, Then we'll dive into the infamous Portland package (laughs) with Eric here, and we'll finish it off with some real estate and how everything happening in our city, how it's affecting our inventory and our prices. So we have an awesome guest today. His name is Eric Post, and he is a successful entrepreneur, uh, restaurateur. He's a father of two. Um, He was a Marine, business consultant, and most recently he is an activist for peace and unity in our uh, beautiful city or once beautiful city of Portland, Oregon. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So Eric, I kind of feel like I've told your whole story here, but what would you like to... uh, Oh, here we go. Share with listen, us. listen, yeah. you, you call yeah, me out, this is your show, but there's so many things I do want to talk about because, yeah. I mean, honestly, there's so much, so many things going on. There's and, a lot going on, and, for sure. And, you know, there's there's all these individual stories of humanity that I think are cool for shoot shows like you guys to really kind of bring the forefront. And, uh, you know, I'm just playing a little teeny part in that. But Portland's Portland's been my focus here for the last yeah. few weeks, for sure. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, where do you want me to start? I mean, what, what's it, what's most interesting? Well, just, you just uh, tell us what your kind of your uh, mission is right now. Uh, you know, peace right. and unity is kind of what I've gathered, just the little bits uh, in talking to you and, our, and social media. So, yeah, and, yeah. I mean... And, so. Like a lot of, I mean, hopefully like everyone out there, you know, there's just been this 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 pressure, this weight of mm-hmm. everything that's gone from violence to, to yelling to arguing. And, um, you know, on, on May 25th, when, when George Floyd was murdered, um, the, the entire country you know, mm-hmm. took a pause and then chaos ensued. And, um, you know, I'll just I'll speed forward to to a part where my daughter wanted to go to a peace rally. Mm-hmm. Um, and it was a march out in Happy Valley, and and I met Deshaun Hardy, who put it on there. He's a you know, he's an activist uh, in the black community. He's a he's a pastor. He's a he's a just an awesome man. So, grabbed my daughter's hand and we went, and uh, you know we marched and and we heard these stories and and had these conversations that were just really touching and moving. And right. we, we we learned a lot. Um, you know, I heard I heard stories of, the, of this of this little girl from a mixed race family her, and the names that she'd been called. And um, you know, as I'm sitting there with my daughter, I'm like, man, as a dad, like, that would yeah. get me going. Um, so we had that experience, and then a few days later, after the riots were really kicking off, I started getting messages from kids, and what the, the messages that I was receiving was because they were children of police officers. Mm-hmm. These kids themselves, from 11 to 19, were receiving death threats. Wow. being called the worst, heinous of names, were saying, you know, you better lock your doors at night, we're going to come burn it down with you inside. And these were from people they knew. Wow, really? Uh, like, yeah. we're good friends. Yeah. yeah, that's that's what I'm having a hard time with these days. So the, I, I was seeing these these tragedies on kind of two ends of the spectrum. I'm like, man, the reason why these keep existing, these keeps perpetuating, because nobody's stopping yelling at each other and facing the actual problems. They're, they're thinking right. each other's the problem. You're fighting the issue with the same yeah. exact yeah, um, and I would go downtown. In my and I, eyes. I would talk to people downtown that were there for the good reasons, and I would, mm-hmm. and then I would also stay back and I'd watch the violence that were people that weren't there for the right reasons. Mm-hmm. Right. And I just decided I want to do something about it. And <laughs> so on the Fourth of July, I woke up that morning. I grabbed the flag off my house and I went down to the elk in the middle of all that chaos. I saw that. I saw that a flag on Instagram. Right in the of that sucker. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you did. It was um, pretty brave. So yeah. what uh, what happened when you what kind of what kind of? Uh, well, well, I knew it was going to be met with resistance, and unfortunately, you know what. When, when putting an American flag in an American city on Independence Day is mm-hmm. dangerous and controversial, you know it's a problem. Right, that's sure. Right, there's, yeah. there's, a, there's a broken system, right? Mm-hmm. So, I, you know, of course the flag got burned that night, as well to the rights, and actually got burned within 15 minutes of me leaving. Um, so the next day, instead of going down and planting another one, um, I went down there and collected the ashes and said, listen, this is, let me be an example of how instead of just having me, my... It, my opinion of the world is right and yours is wrong. Mm-hmm. Maybe an example of like, hey, I can have my opinion and you can have yours too. Right. How do we coexist? Right. And how do we right. stop yelling at each other and start like having a having a, a conversation? Absolutely. So I gave that little speech there and that went viral. And so I decided to have a, a rally a couple days later and, and, and 
here we are. <laughs> yeah. And so how did the rally go? I don't know Deshaun, but I saw that he was part of your rally. He was, and absolutely. So, so you guys kind of uh, co- Man, it was- Working together or- how? I've never had death threats before, all right? So imagine- in, So you got them. Oh, and, and now yeah. you have. <laughs> now you're on the list of death threats. Ha- trying to put a peace rally on. Yeah, you've got when death you threats. When you receive death threats, right? Yeah. yeah. When everybody was invited. And, and I gave this analogy, like when I went to boot camp and how everybody showed up and you're all different. Mm-hmm. Right, completely different. Right. Socioeconomically, appearance, religion, mm-hmm. beliefs, everything. Yeah. But the very first thing they do is they give you one uniform, <laughs> right? All your clothes strip get strip away. All strip those away, differences. Yeah. Cut I your never hair thought all about off. Mm-hmm. Way, but you're all alike. Same you're all the same. You become yep. the and, and here's why: it's not because you you don't believe in what you believe, but you believe in them so much that in order for your beliefs to be a part of America, that mm-hmm. that represents that your beliefs has to be heard too and fought for, and same with yours and yours and yours. So it was, right. a, it was a unity. We're fighting for all of our beliefs, not just one set. And so I went to have this event that kind of represented that. Mm-hmm. So people from all ends of the spectrum, I said, please leave your banners at home, your flags, your shirts. Come with an Oregon Peace shirt. Come representing mm-hmm. what you believe, but lead an example that you can hear from everybody right. else as well. Listening. Yeah, I've started talking too much, but I get no, so no, no, absolutely. That's what I we, tell we, you know. So we tell children, put your listening ears on, and I think adults yeah. could use that same advice right now. And I want to do it downtown on purpose. Right. I could have done it somewhere else and had a thousand plus people. Like you know what I mean? Like it could have been a massive thing. Mm-hmm. But I want to prove a point that you could do something in downtown Portland. And it could be done in such a way where it's not counter-protested. And I'll explain that in a second. Right. And people from all ends of the spectrum are there for one thing, unified for one reason. Mm-hmm. And I did it at the waterfront where it was like the grass and the water and some sunshine instead of just the chaos to remind people how beautiful it could be. Right. Right. Again, so there's a lot of intentionality behind it. I like that. Yeah. And our, our city's so beautiful and it's been torn up by this. So it's uh, this is important that you're going down there and trying to spearhead this this peace and unity. And then we're, we all have to work together. So yeah. How, how did your uh, rally go? I wasn't able to make it down there. But no, so man. It tell was, us how that went. <laughs> you know, leading up to it, I'll be honest, I've, I've actually never been scared in my entire life. Jump mm-hmm. out of airplanes, like never been scared before. But when the death threats cards started coming in, the violence, and I was getting, I had some people running intel for me. When I started seeing what they were doing to prepare, and Antifa was bringing in people from Eugene and Salem and loading up and forming up to come, and it was pictures of me that were grotesque. And so it wasn't for me because I knew I'd be safe because I had security and all that, but it was the other people that were there. I, I honestly feel like it's most people can't speak openly right now. Um, and mm-hmm. if you do, there's a good chance you're going to get shredded on social media. Mm-hmm. Um, and I just want to know how you, how, how are you handling those death threats? Are they continuing? Are they? No, because what, what I was and what they pinned me to be were two totally completely things, mm-hmm. two right. completely different things. And so instantly it was actually in some Antifa showed up in the back to kind of scout me out. And one of them actually tweeted live that, Hey, it's actually not that bad to listen to. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> right. Yeah. So. And so it was because I was so conscious about, about, having the belief that an idea should be able to stand on its own. It doesn't have to stand in opposition of another belief. Mm-hmm. Right. And if it's good enough, then anybody that faces your, you know, comes against yours, that's on them. Right. But right. I don't have to set up a business or an idea or a belief to, to on the predication that yours has to fail for mine to succeed. Absolutely. Right. Yep. And so everything I'm trying to position where it's like, it stands on its own thing. Mm-hmm. If you stand against it, that's on you, but I don't know standing against you. Right. That makes right. Sense. Yeah, absolutely. So it, it was real successful. We had hundreds of people out there. We, you know, we're streamed everywhere, news coverage about leading as an example. And I've been getting some really great messages that aren't death threats now. Are you doing that. another one soon? Is there? Um, I'm trying. Yes, for yeah. sure. But I'm trying to decide what's the next course of action. Mm-hmm. You know, is it leading a recall party against leaders that are allowing this to happen? Right. Right. Is it is it doing them in the different cities that are asking me now to come and bring this sort of thing to their cities or their jurisdictions? Oh, really? So don't know yet. Honestly, so you have had um, other cities ask you to. Ton, yeah, yeah, four, five, six around around Oregon so far. Yeah, that's um, great. You know, and, and I got reached out to for, for some different organizations on, on both sides of the political spectrum said, hey, if I could get leaders on the opposite side to sit down with me, would you help mediate? Absolutely, And I'm like, yeah. that's why I'm doing this. Yeah, that's your, I, right? I, the part that I've seen of you is, is that bringing the unity, bringing people together, but it's also in a way that um, my ears don't turn off when I'm listening to you speak. There's so people that are just pounding their ideas mm-hmm. so hard that uh, you're just immediately turned off. So I appreciate your approach well, it's to, easy to all do, of this. Right? Yeah. It's easy to galvanize people because it's easy to speak to people that believe like you. Right. That's <laughs> right? the easiest. Right. Yeah. Then you don't get any friction. Right. Yeah. 
you know? And so everybody's just talking to just the people that believe like you. And so then no hearts and minds are being turned to solving problems. We're just right. siloing, right? And labeling and all this divisiveness just really turns me off. So mm-hmm. people mis- mistake my patriotism as like, I'm just pro America, right. right? Cause that's, that's what everyone kind of talks about. Right. Like if I have the flag in front of my house, I look at America as this widely diverse, beautiful array of colorful people. And, and that's what makes it America. And that's right? what makes it America. That's, that's what we're trying to celebrate and bring back, I think. It, yeah, we've definitely but, gotten away from that where it's just. And, and we got away because everyone wants to be right. R- yeah. You know what I mean? And But but for patriotism for me means that if I want my country to succeed, mm-hmm. knowing that's such a wide, diverse country, then I better also root for everybody else to succeed too. Or else that's not patriotic in my in my world, right? Absolutely. So that's that that's that kind of mantra. I'm like, yes, I'm patriotic, but let me define what that means. Yeah, to and you. patriotism yeah. means I want you to win just as I want me, and I'm going to fight for you to win just as much as I am for me. And those rights. That and those along. rights. Yeah, Absolutely. to sit here and talk about it yeah, and, for sure. and be in a position to. Yeah. Do you have any? I'm gonna drink this beer. While yeah, we're, while let's we're yeah, let's drink. So what yeah. what what are I know you're kind of trying to decide what you what what the next steps are, but have you have you what are your thoughts? Like have you thought about? You know, politics are one of those things that have been interesting to me, but I've also always believed that I could do just as much, if not more, outside of the political position because politics to me is actually ugly. It's very divisive, mm-hmm. and there's really just a two party system. To be fair, we don't have a lot of options in a lot of right. jurisdictions, and like many people out there, I don't fit in a box. The lesser of two evils is essentially how you go to the voting poll. Right. <laughs> yeah, it's unfortunate. Right. Which one don't I true. like? It's and what a tragedy that, that is. Yeah. 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 <laughs> right? Yeah. So, yeah, I just I just really think that um, I, I, I'm balancing that. Like, can I can I navigate that world and stay true to who I am mm-hmm. without having to, to, to bow out or sell out to anything? So clearly you've been asked to step in oh, to maybe some certain roles. I mean, you have a voice that... Um, I think carries across to many, yeah, well, so I you. can see that how that would be an thank obvious you. choice there. Um, but uh, it's just not where you find yourself. Um, I, I don't at know. This time. I, I'm leaning more and more that way if it's necessary, mm-hmm. right? It's out of duty of service, not anything I would be seeking out. There you have right. it, people. Eric Post for governor. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> <laughs> and with that being said, I hate to cut off this conversation no, no, because it's it's uh, you know. It's, it's, we could talk about this forever. I know. Um, yeah, absolutely. So, but we're going to take a quick break here and listen to one of our sponsors. And when we come back, we're going to dive into the infamous Portland package. Right on. Have you ever thought about flipping your own home? Need to sell but cannot afford the repairs? We, we have, have the, the solution, solution for, for you. you. With our Flip Your Own Home program, we can help you maximize your full potential profit. For a free, no obligation, 15-minute consultation, call or text us today at 503-382-7798. Welcome back, everyone. We're here at the GMP Studios on 24th and East Burnside. I'm your host, John Taylor, and my lovely co-host, Christina Bullock, and we're back with our guest, Eric Post. Eric is going to talk to us about the infamous Portland package, and if you don't know, uh, the infamous Portland package is basically your top three things, how you would show off Portland to an out-of-town guest, and so... My, my go-to is I'd take them to the city grill, which shows off all the views and the rivers and the mountains. I'd take them up to the gorge and show off uh, Multnomah Falls. And then I'd take them down to our beautiful coast and Cannon Beach, Lincoln City, or one of the one of the coast towns. So with that being said, Eric, what would be... What are you well, I want to hear yours too, though. What's yeah. yours? Oh, that's actually... I, I don't know right now. I feel like uh, the beach is definitely... Uh, Lincoln City is something where I just went. I love Trillium Lake. That's like an amazing, any of the lakes, Mm -hmm. falls. Um, Hiking in the gorge for me is just something that is uh, not just beautiful, but spiritual too. It's just Mm -hmm. a good reset button for me. So, Mm -hmm. Um, and then of course there's way too many restaurants to choose Mm -hmm. from. Mm -hmm. And I know I have one. Uh, you, you've so got if I'm going to bring someone to Portland, they got to come to one of yeah. my favorite bowls, <laughs> acai uh, bowl. So, to, yeah, go ahead and tell us what. Yeah, tell yeah, us. Yeah, I started this project. I was called Jewel Craft and Nutrition. We're mm-hmm. up on 46 and Sandy in Northeast of Hollywood. Mm-hmm. And I started that for, for a few different reasons. Um, the, the saddest of them, uh, uh, two and a half years ago, my, my father 
who I didn't get to see for about 27 years, I mm-hmm. reconnected with him. Just after us starting to reconnect, he died of type 2 diabetes, all right, which is a completely preventable, you know, death. It's, right. It was a metabolic disease that could have been monitored and handled mm-hmm. better through nutrition. Yeah. My mom's had a few autoimmune diseases, cancer a couple of times, Crohn's disease. So I've seen what nutrition can do for and against you. So mm-hmm. I want to do my next business or invest in one that was nutrition focused. So I came with this idea, met my partner, who was, a, who was an amazing chef. And then we came at it with everything that we create is going to come from the nutrition standpoint first, mm-hmm. and then he'll make it taste amazing. And it looks beautiful, too. And it looks beautiful. It's, it's got the whole package. It yeah, really does. From, the from Portland the, package. From, <laughs> and from the, from the business side, I also wanted to prove a point, mm-hmm. right? So I do business consulting and marketing consulting and whatnot. I wanted mm-hmm. to show, put my money where my mouth with, is that I can open the, the, the highest failure rate business that you can have a restaurant, right? right? It's the worst right. investment. Right. In Portland, Oregon, which is com- crazy competitive, and crush it still, yeah. right? Using these basic techniques that I teach other businesses. So I've done it. Instead of waiting five years to be, you know, making money, it took us about a month to break even, right? So nice. it's like, bam, right away. That's but, awesome. But I didn't run it like a yeah. restaurant. So I understood what we we're actually trying to do. So, for instance, like the National University of Natural Medicine, they reached out to us and said, we'll actually work with you and we'll give you a donation if we can put our logo on your menu, right? Because we're, oh. we're food, is, food mm-hmm. is medicine. Food is medicine. Yeah. So I have an on-site full, full-time nutritionist that, that helps craft our things and make sure our recipes are on point. Um, everything we do is gluten, corn, soy, sugar, dairy-free, all organic, like the most clean, healthy things you can make. And in nothing, we don't buy anything pre-made. We make everything. We make our own you can bread, taste sauce, everything. the difference. Literally, I'll be stopping by there today. Yeah. yeah. So, like Under Armour, when they had their uh, professional uh, runner summit, we, you know, we're pretty new on the scene. Um, they heard about us. They had us in to cater all their professional Olympians and their runners for their for the track mm-hmm. summit. Um, then we catered. I met with the CEO of Under Armour, catered his leadership team, and then he like he looked at us. And he's like, "Will you cater our Olympians for this year?" And, oh wow! I had no them. idea. Yeah, that's awesome. And we haven't put that out yet because yeah. it got canceled. Oh so, like, yeah, the trials got pushed out of here. So you know, Darn it. But, but that's how serious we are about delivering a plate of food in front of anybody that an Olympian would eat, right? Or well, I mean, speaking eat. of, and in, in this time when we're all, you know, it's important for us to focus on health, yeah. and with COVID floating around. Yeah. Um, your restaurant is where I choose to go. You know, if I'm picking up something for my son and I, oh, um, you. yeah, so, yeah, and it's weird. super cute too. It's I love all the plants. Funky thing and plants. Yeah. And, like during COVID, one of the things we started doing right away is, uh, immediately all the frontline workers. So I fed over a thousand nurses and doctors right away. Oh, nice. Right. Like, so yeah. every week I was I delivering not meals to the different hospitals. Yeah. I was raising money. I paid for them myself because I knew that, you know, the immune systems were super important. Mm-hmm. So, so you know, fire, police, frontline workers, medical workers, first responders, I fed, I've, I lost track, way over a thousand at some yeah. point. I find that surprising that, that we don't hear that being blasted across the news on uh, the focus yeah. of, of our health and how food is medicine. Um, it's cause and it's, getting outside, there's no, money in it for there's else. no right. <laughs> right. <laughs> you can touch on a very touchy subject again, <laughs> but yeah. a whole nother show. Yeah. Oh, whole nother show. <laughs> but the idea that like, it is the truth. Like, yeah. so if there's food as medicine, then we should be able to do it. And there's been, never been a time for us to raise our hand and try and step in. And so we tried. Yeah. The best I love can. it. That's great. Yeah, I didn't know you. you guys were doing that. So. Absolutely. So the Portland package, you'd first take them to your restaurant and yeah. then where else would you take them to I show I go to Mount Hood. Yeah. I love Mount Hood. I've climbed it. I, I love everything. I love the, the trails, the trail running, the, the, the rivers, the lakes. I mean, yep. the Trillium Lake is beautiful. Yeah. Fish yeah. there. It I'll looks go. fake to me. Oh, it's, I, I think go I've practice said it swimming before. up there. It looks like a movie set. Like the, the <laughs> it's going to roll right off. And the, it's it just, world class. It does not it's, seem it's real. Gorgeous. It's so Absolutely. beautiful. And, and Mirror Lake, yeah. too. Mm-hmm. If you hike up to Mirror Lake. And up I've to not Tom been Beach. there yet. Oh, you have to. It's just a little hike. They have a new trail to it now. That um, might be the new one. It's it, it's a little bit more remote and it's just be, it's smaller. Uh-huh. But it just has this sense of like you're you're a thousand miles away, not just five. Perfect. And it's know? good. Uh, there's it's, uh, there's other, camping up there. Yeah. Fish up there. It's beautiful. There's so much to do up on the mountain yeah, absolutely I go down down. so mirror lake is a favorite would right. you have another one that i love to run the salmon river trail okay so there's a salmon river trail along the salmon river in this valley it's like the huckleberry i think the huckleberry ridge and there's the valley right there and there's just this it just runs forever and i think you run forever too right yeah i do i love it i yeah. that's i think the very first video i ever saw of you on social media yeah. was right when this whole pandemic started 
and you uh, just went out and ran, and I'm like, who is this person? That's the first one you saw? <laughs> That's the very Runner, first girl. video oh, I yeah. saw. What I ran like 30 miles, yeah. I'm like, who I goes say, and you, runs Have you done marathons? Far. But if you're running 30 miles, obviously, yeah. So a couple of years ago. It's okay. He was I, talking while doing it as well. <laughs> so that's I, insane. I can't believe that's the first one you that's saw. That's the very me. first uh, one. I'm like, intense day. follow. I, I ran the last two <laughs> miles funny. of yeah. the Portland Marathon, but that's about as close as I got to a marathon. Yeah, we did. We ran in. Every year I kind of set a challenge for myself. <laughs> and, and I decided to do tri- uh, Ironman triathletes. And so I taught myself to swim and then ran a couple of, you know, Ironman events. No big deal. I, t- I placed top 10% of the world. Of you know, course first you year, did. Right? Like, yeah. Cause I just, I just dedicated <laughs> myself to it. Right. But, um, so you taught yourself to swim. Did you not did. know how to swim before? I mean, that? I could swim around, of course. And like, but, but just, just swim. the you, art of swimming you, for a triathlon is a hundred percent different. Yeah. I could so. go like bike and swim, but yeah. to swim a lap or bike and run, but to swim a lap, I'd be exhausted. Right. So yeah. I had to learn the technique. Right. And when you're swimming, you know, people are smacking against you. Oh, my God. And, yeah. yeah. Oh, I got bloody nose. Oh, yeah. Different. You get punched oh, yeah. in oh, that water. A, everyone's I've on done the beach it. like, oh, let's help you with your wetsuit. And they dive in. And everyone's like, ah, ah. Yeah. 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 Right. All right. Got I've it. done a sprint triathlon. And so oh, I did one? it in Austin, Texas. Okay, I yeah, can't yeah. even remember which one it was. But I think uh, after getting like hit a couple times and like, oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. And then I was like, wait a minute. Oh, yeah. No, <laughs> game game on. Oh, and then I was punching heads. It's on. <laughs> I'm like, yeah. I want to get out of here and I'm like, as oh, quick as possible. I'm on the run. Run a right. bike. I'll yeah. catch you. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, so, no, so, that's so, quite an experience. So, Jewel Restaurant. Yeah. Mountain All the mountains. Hood. And then what was and, your third one? And right now, I'd go downtown. Yeah. And, you know, even from out of town, I'd, I'd really want to kind of do a drive through and, and, Especially if they've seen Portland before, but it had mm-hmm. been a little while, even just six months. Six months has been even then. Yeah, just just the change. Our streets have changed entirely. The vibe, the mood, uh, mm-hmm. the characters, uh, the, the just the sense of lawlessness. Mm-hmm. If that makes sense. Oh yeah, there's this yeah. overwhelming just sense of of lawlessness and almost. They, I feel like there's a certain group of people that have more rights than yeah. I do as a law abiding citizen. than those are the people on it's the streets. To so. I posted that this morning that unfortunately, you know, when you use subjective enforcements of laws, that's mm-hmm. when chaos ensues and divisiveness happens. Right. Mm-hmm. So, you know, it should be, it should be enforced equally. Right? Yeah. And that's or else why have it? If, yeah, yeah. If I'm right? going to get in trouble for doing something I expect, yeah. I, I don't know. It's, it's hard. Is all. I definitely, I don't know what that answer is to help though. Yeah. You know, I think that's, where my brain goes, I what have, can I we do? We're not going to talk about on this. No, show. that's a whole other that's a whole show. Other show as well. But, but I would go downtown, truly, and and to sh- to share that story, um, mm-hmm. and to either have people inspired to not recreate it, mm-hmm. right, or right. have them, in, right. you know, curious that they want to go research about it mm-hmm. or learn more about the cause. But something to spur to take some sort of action is the reason why I take them downtown and just show them what's going on, what's happening. Yeah. No, that's a good way. I like hearing that because yeah, acti- um, activate themselves. Yeah, I feel like um, maybe a little off subject, but when I went to um, Germany and yeah. went to, um, where was I in Germany? What's the? I don't know. I don't know. Holocaust. I wasn't there. Holocaust. What's the city? Um, Just say you went to the museum. We'll no, I went. Uh, the, the nice thing about there was that um, all the atrocities and everything were all almost in your face mm. so much to a point that um, you didn't forget where you came from, mm. but everyone was like a 180. I mm. couldn't have imagined it to be a nicer city. Mm-hmm. It, I literally have no idea why it's skipping my brain. It's a, because you're on it's camera. It'll, it'll the biggest it'll, it'll, it'll come back city <laughs> after, <laughs> after the show <laughs> in Germany. Come on guys. So yeah, but it's, it's the, that in your face kind mm. of, um, it gets the conversations going mm. and reminds you where you've been and that you don't want to go back there again. I feel like that's where Germany. Here, here's this crazy thing about Portland. I was just down in all this chaos. And then the very next day I went to an, I was going to be interviewed based on what was going to happen. So I met the camera crew and stuff and I said, can we just please meet at a park? Right. So we have all this chaos and all this fighting and all this yelling. And we went and met at a park, not very far away. And as we're sitting there talking about this chaos, mm-hmm. this, this, this mom and, and daughter walked by and the daughter like giggled. All right. Mm-hmm. So I'm talking to you or, or you about this, about this craziness. And mm-hmm. all of a sudden out of, out of my ear, I just hear this like innocent, pure, Beautiful joyful giggle. giggle. Yeah. And I looked over and I, I was like, you realize that this is still going on too. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right. Like, like we're all looking for all the chaos, but these, these little moments of here are happening too. And we should make sure we appreciate those at the exact same time. People Absolutely. aren't just downtown fighting. I, I yeah. was just thinking yeah. that same thing. I was driving down along the waterfront actually to our, our last podcast uh, was in a different location. And um, anyway, 
I was, you know, you're seeing all this chaos and then the beauty. Yeah, yeah. I, I saw families walking down the waterfront and people holding hands and really enjoying the beauty. So it's just that contrast. But there's, yeah. we still have to enjoy that too. It's still going on and it's still beautiful down there. Turning but off the news. It can be is better. Helpful. And, yeah. you know, what you're doing to kind of spearhead that. Uh, can 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 really bring about some real change. So. Yeah, I hope I, so. I, I wish do. we could focus on more positive action. Yeah, absolutely. Like, see that side of humanity How has that's it affected there? some of the businesses down there. I haven't really. You, I've talked to a lot. You've been of them. down there in the middle of it, so you I have. Know more than uh, me. They're going out. Yeah. I mean, they're they're planning on leaving. There there's no faith in, in what's going to happen yeah. in the city. Yeah. There's no faith in the leadership. There's no faith they're going to be main, They're going to be kept safe. Right. These are gener- These are businesses that have been owned over generations. Right. And they're seeing them literally be burned, looted, destroyed, disrespected, and non-supported. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, That's and they're sad. having insurance claims that aren't matching, you know, the damage. Mm-hmm. I mean, I'm talking family, generations of family devastation, not just mentioned culturally to the city and right. the morale of the entire city, but the individual stories uh, couldn't be more sad. Um, and I've talked to them personally. This isn't just hyperbole or stuff I've read about. I've literally looked them in the face or talked right. to them on the phone and asked how they're doing and how it's impacting them. And they're just devastated and that's not even the good enough word no right? it doesn't describe it everything. takes all their identity it takes all their humanity all and there's their people work, yeah their legacy many years of gone of heart and soul poured into a business yeah and so and they're um, like now what yeah you know now what and then who's gonna have the the faith to, to step in those places again for a while i'm i have real big concerns about the city of portland and the state too right now well i, I think that's a perfect place to pause and yeah, we'll pick sure. up in just a moment when we hear from our sponsor we'll come back and and pick up where we left off awesome. and talk about yeah. uh real estate in portland and how everything that's happening is affecting our real estate uh inventory prices and businesses obviously so we'll be right back you want the absolute best for yourself and you want it to be easy That's why we created Green 85. It helps with detoxifying the body gently. We're proud it's chemical free, unlike almost all other supplements you'll find. Bottom line, Green 85 will get you healthier. We look forward to hearing what Green 85 did for you. To get this product and our other amazing products, go to chemicalfreebody.com. That's chemicalfreebody.com. Welcome back, everyone, and we are back with our guest, Eric Post. Cheers. Cheers, cheers. everyone. All right, y'all. Cheers. cheers. Let's cheers. actually cheers. I yeah. like this. Cheers. Right. Gateway Brewing. Gateway Brewing and beer. Uh, delicious beer. I better take a drink. Pound it. So we're going to talk about uh, real estate in Portland and just kind of how this uh, the, the civil unrest has impacted the real estate market and, and Eric's thoughts on that. And Eric, so... You know, you've owned real estate companies. You've been in the real estate business yep. in Portland for years and years. And, and so tell us what your thoughts are on uh, how this is all impacting uh, currently and long term. Yeah. On the, on the macro side, I mean, residential real estate's booming in a lot of areas. So that's mm-hmm. been great to see. I like, people have a lot of time, you know, to be house shopping and they're at home. They're really, you know, doing their home improvements and stuff yeah, like that. I think yeah. there so. was pent up demand with the, the lockdown and, and yeah. lack of roaring inventory. right now. But, you know, is, yeah. there, is there going to be a long term impact? I, I have a serious concern of the long term. So if you look at, you know, how Portland is, we have mm-hmm. a Portland market and we have all our subsets, the Tri County area. Mm-hmm. So obviously, what happens in the nucleus impacts eventually spreads out. Right. Right. Yeah. Ups and downs, both goods and bads. So right now, if we look at what's happening with the moratorium on um, like evictions mm-hmm. and that being extended, um, there's lots of lenders I know they're discussing, like they're not even going to lend inside jurisdictions that have those abilities for tenants not to pay and then for landlords not to be able to evict them. Right. Right. That, I Cause, mean, because in terms of like a risk for a lender, like why would they make a loan in an area where they're lending to the person that might not have income? Right? Yeah. True. And, and have no ability to get them out. Yeah. Yeah, your hands are definitely the, tied here. Tied, so why would they start making yep. loans? So, you know, when we have lenders and looking at the risk profiles of different cities and states, mm-hmm. that's very important for us to, to consider. Yep. Right? And, and it's not being considered. It's not being considered. Right. And, I mean, I'm talking about, uh, I don't know how many people I've talked to. I, I would love to give you a number. But, you know, people that own investment property in Portland, Multnomah County, they're done. 
and they're done pulling you know, out. They're absolutely one hundred percent. They have zero confidence. Their their place isn't going to get burned down. They have zero confidence that they're they're going to have a tenant be able to put in there. They have zero con- that the tenant that comes in pay. and is going to pay. Yeah. And if they can't kick them out, then they're now stuck making right. a payment. It, it's it's a tragic environment for an investor actually right now. Well, that's, the a, ten- that's a large chunk you have to pay to get, if you can get them out, you have to pay. A, pay moving uh, fees. Move, yeah, and it, like up to 4,500 bucks. Right. Yeah. yeah. So. so these policies, although I can understand, you know, why they sound great, mm-hmm. practically ap- applied to a real world in a part of a bigger economy doesn't work. And we're seeing it not working. Yeah. yeah. Right. So I have, I do have concerns about that, you know, even though I love the city and I hate to talk, you know, poorly about it but it, right you have to this is it. real it's no, very it's, real we have to look at reality for sure it so. started with sb608 and reputation for all of this so think about when ta- people talk about portland and it was a nice place people are nice to green. nice there it's green yeah. and now they see a couple of months of straight rioting and mm-hmm. destruction you talk about a change in perception of your city right absolutely right so now you know we're looking at tourism and decline in tourism we're mm-hmm. looking at decline in immigration you know in migration from other states right yeah. right we're looking at a decline in, in those economies and people leaving and people leaving mm-hmm. right so it, it's a, there's a there's a morale and a reputation that we don't quite understand how bad it's being impacted yet mm-hmm. but we know it is because we look at all across, they're, they're seeing our Portland, Oregon, civil unrest, 47 straight days, right. you know, Portland, Oregon, destruction, Portland, Oregon, protest. Like, holy moly, of course, why would somebody want to move in the middle of that, right? So that's, I have some concerns over that too. You know, that needs to be, that needs to be addressed. And we don't know what the impact is yet. Yeah, it's hard, it's hard to say, but it's, it, it is fascinating that it's roaring the way it is right now. And Seattle's mm-hmm. the same way. Their market's on fire. Yeah, um, you know, mm-hmm. at the same time, the city's on fire. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, yeah. houses are selling, the prices are up. And so yeah. it's good right now, but I have the same concern. But but the good thing is that the, that the fundamentals that have made Oregon and Portland um, a great place to live are the foundation is still, still there. there. There's just Absolutely. a lot of scar tissue built up. Right. So, you know, with the with the, the, the weather and access to a beach and a mountain and a, and a desert and a valley and all those things are still there. It has not right? gone away. Yeah. Right. You mm-hmm. know, access for to an amazing international airport, mm-hmm. still there, right? So there are still some things that are definitely, you know, very attractive, but it's just been covered up with all these other things. So, Yeah, mm-hmm. crazy. So any uh, favorite neighborhoods in Portland? For real estate? Yeah. Or just to live? <sighs> Man. Where do you live right now? Well, I live Western. out. In, I live, you know, I live out in the deep southeast, right? Uh-huh. So I live in a suburb. Yep. And the reason why we live there was for no other than the school district originally, mm-hmm. right? You know, if I didn't have children, I'd be wanting to mid, kind of in the midst of everything. You could walk right. to a bar and walk to the a river or something, yep. right? Yeah. So being in the suburb is just doing it for my children, right? Yeah. You know? Right. Um, but it's beautiful That's out there. That's where I'm at. <laughs> yeah, you know, and there's still restaurants and some, you know, great fran- but friends. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I call them like. Family, kind of family, like, family. my family. Yep. Yeah. Right? They're yeah. Amazing people that I've met as a result of my, you know, my kids' friends as parents. Mm-hmm. Lifelong. I'm sure I'll be lifelong friends with them. We travel together. We invest together. I've, I've had businesses with, with some of them. Mm-hmm. So you know, I have no regrets for those things. But you know, I would probably want to pick you know a little bit more closer to something. Either that or the opposite. Just <laughs> like <what>? country. Out. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I've, yeah. I've lived downtown. Yeah. And, oh yeah. That's right. Uh, I, the very first house I bought was out in Corbett on an acreage. So I've lived okay. there. I've lived down. I've lived all over. I've lived in West Lynn. I've lived. I think the only place I haven't lived is in Lake Oswego proper, but, mm-hmm. um, you know, I'm kind of a, I'm, I'm looking to push, I'm out in Troutdale now. Oh, and I, so didn't know that. Yeah. I, I wouldn't mind getting some acreage again out in, in Corbett, just kind of get out there. Well, you guys know, I mean, for the general population, it's just looking to buy or sell their primary residence. Mm-hmm. It, it's not about timing. If, if the rates are there, or the market's right. It's more about if their life is ready. Right. You know, yeah. like, or is their job stable or is the school district that they've decided to stay in or not? Like, like the ability for somebody to say, hey, listen, I know the rates are low, but if I'm unstable over here, then why would I, that doesn't matter, right? I might need to sell again in a year, mm-hmm. then what? So it's more about like if they're ready, you know, if their life is ready, then that's, then it, is, it does have to be a great time. But if they're, if they're not ready, if something else is unstable here, yeah. then it doesn't matter how great the market is. Right. right. Yeah, I think no matter what. No matter what. Yeah, there's yeah. always a good the time if you're ready. The rates are crazy low right now, right? Like, they're, they're, they're amazing. Somebody got under 3% like recently. <laughs> like what? For a 30-year fix? It's, and just, I've, it's insane. I've personally kind of moved my, my personal investment strategy outside of residential more into commercial and industrial personally. Yeah. Um, just because I was unsure about what's happening in the residential from, from the jurisdictional standpoint or controls. Mm-hmm. So sure. but I went in more of that industrial world. They're longer term anyways. Yeah. You know what I mean? And there's less turnover. So just more, more of that in building development in, in, in commercial and uh, industrial. Quick question. Did you... Yeah. Uh, decide to do that once the uh, tenant bill or the uh, 
SB 608 came out, the Senate bill? I had was already, that part of the... I had already been going that way. Okay. Yeah. Because yeah. I know that was a big discouragement for yeah. other investors. You know, because I saw the writing on the wall. Mm-hmm. So our our area generally follows a few other key areas in this in the country, mm-hmm. right? So when I see something happen in the Bay Area, I'm like, it's just a matter of time. So I before Seattle, it makes its way it's up, just yep. a matter of time before it hits Portland. So you know, you, I kind of have these you know canaries in the in the, mm-hmm. in the coal mine sort of thing that you can kind of look at and decide yeah. how we're going to be six months behind the Bay Area, right? We're going to be four months behind Seattle generally, right? Um, statistically and just philosophically, politically. So I just look at those and kind of gives me an idea. What those are those are good benchmarks to, yeah. to look at. So any yeah. fun development projects right now or? I, I have a little a flipper I'm um, finishing up in, in Lake Oswego and a um, storage unit project that I'm working on in Sun River, actually. Oh, nice. Yeah. 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 Nice. I'm going to build some storage units down there in the industrial park at Sun River. I've been that, kind of researching that a little bit. I'm oh, interested, yeah. so I'll have to pick your brain. Pick, I've been working out for a couple of years. Yeah. I hired a consultant to come in and help me out. Yeah, Speaking of the Portland package, Sun River is... Definitely. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's, that's right? I can't believe Sun no River one's mentioned beautiful. Sun River. So yeah. that's I a love point. Central Oregon. That's one of those things, you know, you get three hours down there and it's cool. It's just another whole thing and yeah. another yeah. whole vibe and it's awesome, yeah. So uh, any favorite type of home or favorite type of home? Yeah. I want I like I like ones with a little bit of at least a view or space, mm-hmm. right? And and for me, when I build, uh, so I love to design a home and build homes. And the one one of the things I like to do is, is bring something unique or interesting to it, right? So it's not just hey, you walk in, I got the de- the den to my left, the dining room to my right, right. the kitchen down there, my stairwell, you know, <laughs> just some sort of interest. So in some of the designs, I've either created like a courtyard out front because I think that's my favorite. Yeah. I love a U shaped uh, home yeah, with courtyard, the courtyard, yeah. courtyard yeah. right? Just full of greens and like. And, and make the experience going to the front door something unique and different, right? Mm-hmm. Because just kind of overtook and everyone's kind of focused on the backyard. Yep. What about the experience like getting to your door, you know? So just things like that I try and think about and bring something new to. Nice. Yeah, it's funny. One of our recent guests, he wanted a house with uh, three... Two or three stories underground. Oh yeah, I <laughs> we forgot were, about that. Okay, wait. I've is never it, is heard he a of that. Or what's going on? No, I thought it was not. a. I he thought just, it was a prepper too. But that's exactly what we said. But no, no? Just underground living reason. is for him. Yeah, maybe, maybe a lot of wine. I don't know. <laughs> maybe he's treating himself like a bottle of wine, yeah, aging. Yeah. I don't know. Well, what's cool about trends in real estate is what I think that people are really starting to pay attention more about to their lifestyle and less about the square footage, right, or less mm-hmm. about the image. So, you know, people with less time or busier schedules, they really do care about the convenience and the low maintenance of certain things. Absolutely. You know? So yep. I've always tried to, when I've designed homes, more about like, hey, let's sit down and like understand you. So if you're a kayaker and outdoorsy, then let's actually really pay a lot of attention to your garage. Right. And build in storage and, and push it out just a little bit so you can store things. and like, Sure. Because you don't want to be a slave to a yard and cleaning your kitchen. Like you, you want your home to be the basis for living your life. Yeah. yeah. You Outside Absolutely. of the home. Yeah. Absolutely. So all that the, home base. Yeah. yeah for sure. So, yeah. yeah. Covered outdoor living is my, my thing. That's what you love? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, here it's yeah. important for sure. So yeah, I think. The, get the fresh air. Yeah. I think we've uh, covered everything today. Yeah. Is we're there running any out of time, yeah. unfortunately. But uh, it's gone by so off. quick with you, yeah, Eric. That's good. It's gone by quick. Like, we're talking we forever. To, but, uh, any, any parting shots you want to uh, tell? Tell us about your restaurant. Uh, yeah, where can people where find? Can find you? And yeah, I'll do that. Sure. Yeah, it's again, it's in Northeast Hollywood on Forty Six and Sandy. Mm-hmm. It's cool because it's anybody anybody can go eat there with any any reason. Lose mm-hmm. weight, just want a delicious meal, something refreshing, or you have a specific specific dietary need. We have all that handled. Right. But outside of that, like I don't like pitching my own stuff to be honest with you. But what I what I have found to be um, important right now that I'm really focused on is having everybody kind of recognize uncover their ability to really do something. And, okay. and I see a lot of people sitting back, hey, I want them to fix this. I want they to clean this up. I want them to correct mm-hmm. this. I want, and I keep saying, man, you're, you're them. <laughs> right. Like you are they, right? We all, like, you can either smile more or vote differently or, or encourage or join something or make a difference or donate or something. Right. Yeah. And, not, and not just sit back and just wait for everybody else to do something. I think our world's gotten so big, we've forgotten about taking care of our immediate community. We have um, so much power. Right. We can right? make those changes within our communities and, and have that, albeit maybe a small difference. But if everybody did it collectively, that adds up to big changes. And for all yeah, the people absolutely. that are just kind of like feeling the heaviness, like the quickest way to get out of that is to quit focusing on yourself and focus on something else. Go help. Somebody yeah. else. Go do something. Go help. Yeah. yeah. So that's I'm just trying to get that out there, like that spark of like, okay, you're not helpless. You have a voice. You have a passion. You have ability. of resources. That's what I want people to. Like, I love that inspiration. Do. Yeah, so thank tell you. us thank where. Thank you for being that spark. Yeah, yeah tell sure. us where yeah. people can be for like 
You're on social media. What's your Yeah, post? like publicly, um, uh, Facebook, Eric Post American is my public Facebook page. Mm-hmm. And the reason why I have that title is because I didn't want anything to do with veteran or, or any, just like literally just everybody else that I deal with you mm-hmm. know, in America, just an American. Like right. that's just that simple, right? Mm-hmm. Right. Um, so, so I definitely get back to people there. You can see my post there and message me there. That's probably the easiest one. I have personal Instagram and stuff, but public Facebook. Facebook. Ins- Facebook. Eric okay. Post American is probably the best way. Yeah, I'd love that. Perfect. Awesome. Well, thanks again for joining us. We appreciate well, it. Guys. Thank you for Thanks, having everyone, yeah. for watching. And uh, don't forget to check us out. We're on Apple, Spotify, YouTube. Uh, all Things Portland. All yep. Things Portland show. And cheers. Uh, cheers. Yeah, Thank absolutely. You. To inspiration. Right. <laughs> I don't want to interrupt you. Yes. It's all right. Cheers, y'all. Yeah.